I would ask you at this point, is the function of the conjoined lateral bands clear to you? I wonder if we've reviewed those enough. Let, let's take a brief look here. We talked about the conjoined lateral bands connecting the central slip to the lateral bands and connecting the lateral bands to the central slip. The interconnection. This means that nothing goes very far without the neighbor coming along for the ride. The lateral band, when it receives tension, it shares that tension through the conjoined lateral band so that there is associated tension at the central slip insertion. There is no direct line of pull of the lateral band to the terminal tendon insertion without some associated tension being delivered and shared with this conjoined lateral band. You can't move one entity without moving the other. The opposite is then true in that when we see the interosseous and the lumbrical muscle pulling, yes, they have some influence on the lateral band, but because of this conjoined portion here, this interosseous portion shares in distributing power to the conjoined as well as the entire proximal dorsal apparatus. I think as we're going through this, it's hopefully becoming obvious of the great complexity of this dorsal apparatus and how it's a constant interplay between fibers that are carrying tension and transferring tension. Here we see clearly the lateral band and we then see the oblique fibers. Isn't it wonderful to be able to look at the skin and actually see the anatomy underneath and see how it's being activated? Now the conjoined lateral bands, as we know, go in the opposite direction. In other words, a force of the extensor digitorum communis before it reaches the central slip insertion would provide some shared tension to the conjoined lateral band that transfers the t tension to the lateral band more distally. The interconnection goes both directions. Here is a wonderful um, image of anatomy. We see the extensor digitorum, the central slip, and if we look at all four fingers, we can see that the distinction of the central slip is variable. It's really not clearly obvious as a cord-like structure in any of the four fingers. It splays out and it flattens. But what we can see here going to the lateral band clearly is a conjoined lateral band going out from the central portion to connect to the lateral band. We also see one very clearly here on the little finger. In these two fingers we don't see that quite as clearly, but if again if we repositioned and moved the fingers they might become more apparent to us. So these fibers are present and they're interconnecting even though when you look at the cadaver you may not see them readily. This is one of the most fascinating slides I have. Do you recall early in this presentation we talked about how the central fibers are tense in flexion and the lateral fibers are tense in extension? When we made that comment, we were specifically talking about the transfer of power that the conjoined lateral bands provide. Here with these forceps, I am pulling proximally on the very central portion of the proximal aspect of the dorsal apparatus. One would assume that that tension is transferred directly into the central slip insertion. And we see the tension here, but we don't really see that tension continuing. What we do, however, see is we see that by pulling here, we're transferring tension to the lateral bands. Now this is the only tension, and this is a cadaver, so there's no active muscle tension whatsoever. Look how redundant, or, or, or it looks extra long here, because all the tension is being transferred to this lateral band. 
So even though the power of the central slip from the extensor digitorum communis is working to help extend the finger, a portion of that power is distributed to the lateral bands during finger extension. And therefore, they are both working actively to fully extend the finger. You see that there's no tension here. The tension is all in the central portion. However, this is a cadaver. And if indeed the patient was activating this motion, there would be tension here because this would be a contributory pull from the interosseous muscle. But the tension is all transferred over.